how weak earnings are. And in fact, we're likely to start the year in a recession. In fact, I think we were in recession in 2022, but nobody wants to acknowledge that. But just about everybody who is in denial of the 2022 recession expects a recession in 2023. Yet they still expect the stock market to do well, even though we're going to be in recession. Why? The 2022 recession has already caused a lot of economic upheavals, and things are looking bleak for the near future. Peter Schiff is a renowned American stockbroker and investor who has a knack for predicting economic downturns. According to Schiff, the recession of 2023 could be even worse than the recession that took place in 2022. Schiff argues that the economic policies of the past few years have set the stage for an even more severe economic downturn in the coming year. His predictions are based on the current trends of government spending, inflation, and debt levels. He argues that the current economic policies are leading to an unsustainable level of debt and inflation and that the next recession will be worse than any we've seen in the past. Welcome back to our channel. In this video, we'll explore Schiff's predictions and discuss why he believes the 2023 recession will be worse than the one we're currently experiencing. Please watch, like, and share this video. Also, drop your comments and thoughts below. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel for more related content similar to this. We begin with a short clip of Peter Schiff. Welcome everybody to the first podcast of 2023. And if today is any indication of how the markets are going to trade during 2023, we are in for a lot of volatility. But I think today was very telling as to how the rest of the year is likely to play out. First of all, the Dow Jones early in the morning was up better than 200 points before selling off intraday to down over 300 points before closing down just 11 points. So almost unchanged, but the other broader indexes were decisively weaker. The S&P surrendered early morning gains to close down 0.4 of a percent. Russell 2000 surrendered those gains and closed down six tenths of 1%. And the big loser on the day, the NASDAQ, closing down 0.8% after early morning rally. And I think this pretty much is setting the tone for the way the stock market is going to play out in 2023. I think it's going to be another weak year for stocks, in particular for the stocks in the NASDAQ. In fact, take a look at some of the big names from 2022 and, in fact, from years past, and look at what happened to those stocks today. Apple Computer, one of the most highly owned stocks in the country, the second A in FANG, was down 3.85% on the day, hitting a new 52-week low. Apple is now down by... 32% since its high in January of 2022. Also look at Tesla. It's not a FANG stock, but it was probably the first unofficial meme stock. A lot of people own Tesla. That stock was clobbered by 12.5% today, hitting a new 52-week low. It's now down 73% from its record high set in January of 2022. The market hit its highs last year in January, and it was downhill from there. And I think you're going to see the same thing again in 2023. The highs of the year are likely to be made in January. In fact, we may have already made the highs intraday today. We'll see. But I think there's a lot of downside risk in this market. I think the only chance the market has of recovering at some point during the year would be in the aftermath of a full-on Fed pivot. And I'm talking back to quantitative easing, because as long as the Fed is doing quantitative tightening, even if it stops hiking rates, if it simply leaves them alone, I don't think that's going to be enough to stop the stock market from falling. In fact, if you listen to all the coverage on CNBC this morning, which I did, as the market opened for trading in a brand new year, most of the people were saying that this was likely to be a up year. And why? Because last year was a big down year. In fact, it was one of the worst years ever. I'll get into that in a moment. But because the market was so weak, 
in 2022, historically, when you have a down year, it's followed by an up year. So everybody just assumes that history is going to repeat, and they have absolutely no conception of why the situation is very different now than it was following prior down years. Peter Schiff discusses his outlook for the stock market in 2023. He predicts that the market will be volatile and that the Nasdaq, in particular, will perform poorly. He cites the poor performance of companies like Apple and Tesla in 2022 as evidence for his prediction. Schiff also mentions that the market may have already reached its high for the year and that there is a risk of a downward trend. He believes that the only way the market could recover in 2023 would be through a return to quantitative easing by the Federal Reserve. He also mentions that many analysts on CNBC were optimistic about the market's performance in 2023 due to the poor performance in 2022. A December 2022 headline news post by CNBC stated that in 2022, the market's most political stock picks had a bad year, and they're expected to be back in 2023. The market's most political stock picks refer to stocks that are chosen based on their political significance or connections rather than their financial performance. These stock picks had a bad year, meaning that they did not perform well financially. However, the statement suggests that these stock picks will return in 2023, implying that they may perform better in the future or that their political significance may once again impact their performance positively. Listen to these carefully. First of all, yes, the stock market was down big in 2022. In fact, the S&P had its biggest annual decline since 2008. But it's not cheap. If you look at the P.E. of the S&P, even after a near 20% decline in 2022, it's still trading at around 20 times earnings. That's not cheap. In fact, that is expensive for stocks. If you look historically at stock market valuations before the 2000 stock market bubble, before Alan Greenspan was there artificially suppressing interest rates and blowing bubble after bubble, with each successive Fed chairman adding more pages to the same playbook, the average P.E. on stocks was maybe about 15 or 16 times earnings. When stocks went below 10 times earnings, that's when they were cheap. When they rose above 20 times earnings, which they did occasionally, they were expensive. That's where we are now. Now, yes, we did maintain high P.E.s with 0% interest rates and quantitative easing. But if you're looking at that in the rearview mirror, with the Fed hiking rates and fighting inflation, we should go back to a normal P.E. We shouldn't be staying at these absurdly high valuations that were a function of monetary policy that, at least for now, no longer exists. But what's even more important than the historic P.E. is the fact that the E, earnings, is inflated and is going to come down. U.S. companies are not going to be able to maintain current earnings because those earnings were manufactured in an era of artificially low interest rates. Well, the ability of corporations to manufacture those earnings is gone. And in fact, as corporate debt matures and has to be rolled over at higher and higher rates, that's going to diminish corporate earnings because the interest expense is going to go up. And because so many companies are spending so much money on interest for money they borrowed in the past, they have less money to spend now. And so that also diminishes corporate earnings because they can't spend money buying the goods and services of other corporations. And consumers are going to be in the same bind. A lot of individual consumers of corporate goods and services are going to be spending a lot more interest on their own debts or paying the higher price for food, energy, insurance, health care, taxes, there's not going to be money left over for discretionary spending, which makes up the lion's share of corporate earnings. And so not only are stocks not cheap, despite this big drop, but the earnings are about to fall through the floor, meaning stocks are even more expensive than they appear. So if we had a big down year, and as a result of a big down year, stocks were fairly valued or they were cheap, well, then maybe we'd have a rebound in the following year. But if stocks remain expensive despite a big decline, well, forget about what happened historically. 
I think it's far more likely that expensive stocks will continue to fall rather than rise, especially when you look at the bigger picture, which is interest rates have just risen sharply and are likely to keep rising. We have a huge inflation problem that we didn't have in other years where we had the big drop and then we had a recovery. The Fed is way behind the curve fighting an inflation problem that is going to get bigger. And it's not just the stock market that's having problems. It's the bond market. In fact, the S&P 500 had the seventh worst year ever. The total return was minus 18.1% when you include the dividends. But the bond market had the worst year ever. Ten-year treasuries dropped 16%. There's never been a year where treasury bonds have fallen by 16%. And in fact, if you look at the return on the 60-40 portfolio, it was down 16.9% on the year. That is the third worst year ever for the 60-40 portfolio. And in fact, the only two years where investors in a 60-40 portfolio did worse than they did in 2022 was 1931 and 1937. Now, what those two years have in common is they fell during the Great Depression. So outside of the Great Depression, we've never had a year where investors have done so poorly on stocks and bonds. But despite the fact that we've had such a big fall in 10-year treasuries, 10-year treasury bonds remain historically expensive. The yield on a 10-year treasury closed at 3.8%. That is a very low yield, which means a very high price for treasury bonds, especially when you're looking at 7 or 8% inflation. So we have a 10-year treasury with a real yield of around negative 4%. And of course, the real yield is actually lower than that if you had an accurate CPI, which we don't. But even using the government's rig CPI, which dramatically understates the effect inflation has on prices you still have a negative 4% real yield on bonds. Bonds are expensive. And so bonds are likely to have another down year in 2023. And if bonds are going to have a down year in 2023, that's going to put a lot of pressure on the stock market to also have a down year. In this short video clip, Schiff analyses more on the stock market and its valuation. He mentions that in 2022, the stock market had its biggest annual decline since 2008. However, even after this decline, the market is still trading at a high price-to-earnings ratio, P.E., which indicates that stocks are not cheap. Historically, a P.E. of around 15 to 16 was considered normal, and stocks were considered cheap when they traded below a P.E. of 10. However, Schiff argues that the current high P.E. is due to artificially low interest rates and quantitative easing, but these conditions no longer exist. He also predicts that corporate earnings will decline in the future due to rising interest rates, which will make stocks even more expensive than they appear. Schiff concludes by stating that the current market conditions do not justify investing in stocks. Listen to these carefully. In 2023, so all these analysts that are coming out and saying, well, historically, bad years are followed by good years, have no idea what they're talking about because they're not looking at all the other historic precedents that are being broken right now based on the valuations in the stock and bond market and how weak the economy is, how weak earnings are. And in fact, we're likely to start the year in a recession. In fact, I think we were in recession in 2022, but nobody wants to acknowledge that. But just about everybody who is in denial of the 2022 recession expects a recession in 2023, yet they still expect the stock market to do well even though we're going to be in recession. Why? Well, first, everybody expects the recession to be very mild and very shallow. And that's where they're wrong. They're right about the recession, but they're wrong about the severity and the depth. But also, one of the reasons that so many people are confident that the recession is going to be short and shallow is because they also expect the Fed to come to the rescue by going back to QE and by reversing the rate hikes with rate cuts. But even if it does that, it's not going to be a good year for U.S. stocks. It may be a good year for some U.S. stocks, but not the broader averages, in particular the NASDAQ, because these tech stocks are going a lot lower, even if the Fed comes to the rescue. 
because it won't be able to rescue these stocks because inflation is not going to come down. In fact, when it tries to rescue the market, an already high inflation rate is going to move even higher, and that is going to hurt these high multiple tech stocks or these earningless companies. And we're going to continue to see the momentum shifting from those type of momentum stocks into value-oriented dividend-paying stocks. And in fact, if you look at the returns in 2022, I mentioned that the S&P was down 18.1%. The Dow was only down 9%. Why was that? Well, because you have more value-oriented stocks in the Dow. The Russell 2000 down 21%. Why was the Russell 2000 down more than the S&P? Well, because you have fewer value names there than in the S&P. And the index that was down the most was the NASDAQ. It was down 33%. And that's because you have that index dominated by these growth names. And those same growth names are overpriced now. And they're going to continue to fall in an environment of high inflation. And in fact, if you look at the more riskier subset of the NASDAQ, the real risky stocks, like the ones that Kathy Wood owns in the ARK Innovation ETF, that ETF was down 67% in 2022. And it closed the year 80% below its 2021 high. And even though it was down that much, and it was down again today, it was down 2.5% on the first day of trading of 2023 it's still overpriced. In the video clip, Schiff expresses his belief that the U.S. economy is likely to enter a recession in 2023, despite analysts' predictions to the contrary. He argues that current market valuations and weak economic indicators indicate that this recession will not be mild and shallow, as many expect, but rather severe and deep. Schiff also believes that the Federal Reserve's efforts to stimulate the economy through quantitative easing and interest rate cuts will not be enough to prevent a significant downturn in the stock market, particularly for tech stocks. He predicts that momentum will shift from these high multiple, high risk stocks to value oriented, dividend paying stocks. He went on to cite the performance of various stock indices in 2022 as evidence of this trend, with the NASDAQ and particularly the ARK Innovation ETF performing particularly poorly. The ARK Innovation ETF in question is one of the exchange-traded funds created by Kathy Wood, one of the most influential professional investors in the world. According to a December 2022 post by The Motley Fool, ARK Invest gained prominence in 2020. However, in just a few years, most especially in 2022, many of the innovation stocks would picked for ARK Innovation's portfolio fell sharply. This fall resulted in the ETF hitting its lowest level in five years, and this has got investors thinking if it will ever rebound in 2023. While some economists may dispute Schiff's predictions, his analysis of the current economic situation is still worth considering. After all, Schiff has been warning about the potential for a major economic crisis for over a decade. It's possible that his predictions may come true in the coming years. Only time will tell but it's a situation worth keeping an eye on. That's all for today. Feel free to throw any questions our way in the comment section below. Also, kindly share this video with your family and friends, and remember to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more updates. Anticipate our next video update. Thanks for watching.